Danielle Horton. Um, she made an introduction between Jonathan Lake, who is the founder of greentv.com, and myself. And apparently, John had a platform in search of a content creator. I've been a content creator in search of a platform. Thought it might be CNN or something, but you know what? One hour a week, if I got a show, wouldn't be nearly enough. So Green TV is hoping to go 24-7. It'll take us a bit. Um, but we really want to be there for people who want to know what's going on with their planet, with their environment. Lord knows right now, you can't ignore what's going on. So much suffering, so much misery. And we want to be there for people to tell them what's going on and most importantly, what we can do. At this moment too, I mean, as, as, as long as I've been doing this and that's covering climate and all other shades of green for some 20 years, I've never felt this experience of seeing the suffering and the misery on the part of victims who have lost relatives, homes, livelihoods, and they don't even know where to begin. They're shocked. They can't, they can barely speak into the microphone and who could blame them. And you just want to cry. And of course, it's often, most often people who least contribute to it, who perhaps, you know, don't have big houses and big cars and, you know, flying all over the world who are losing their basement apartments in New York City or nice home in New Jersey from the tornado, whatever it is, people are devastated and they're seeing firsthand what we've been mourning about for so long. So I'd love to, um, before we get into, and we will, um, should people be building back? How do they build back better? I often say, when people say, what can I do? I say, we need to change. We need to green the way we drive, what we eat, how we build, how we vote. And, you know, you talk about education. It is so important. I talk about eco we have an eco-literacy crisis in this country. Like so many, if you ask the average person, like woman on the street, cause I used to do this in my, you know, <laughs> comings and goings, I would say there were three questions I'd ask. And this is probably five to 10 years ago. Um, how many of you have heard of Bill McKibben who is, you know, a big climate leader, certainly within climate activism, um, hardly any, hard, one person out of 200 when I was giving a talk in my hometown knew the answer to all three of these questions. He was the only one who knew really any of them. Um, how many parts per million do you think of carbon, of uh, greenhouse gases do you think we're, we have in the atmosphere right now? And what do you think the safe level is? Again, he was the only one who got it. And this was with you know, educated adults in Marin County, okay? Um, they didn't know and, and they weren't there. It was a bunch of speakers. So that it's not like they just came to hear a green talk. So they were probably representative. Uh, and then the third what yeah, so Bill McKibben, what, what's the safe level? And then I, oh, oh yeah, how many of you know um, that we're in, a, in an extinction crisis and which one it is and who's causing it? Us. <laughs> and it just, again, but part of the problem is we didn't necessarily learn about it in school when I was coming up. And yes, kids are now taking more environmental studies. There must be climate courses. That's great, but we can't wait till they grow up and become, you know, journalists, engineers, Builders, because we have a window that's closing, if not yeah. like this much left. It feels. Ten years. Yeah, we need to. Have right, and, and that's why I think media is so important, and because the news networks have failed to really make this a priority. Not one program anywhere in the country on, you know, climate and environmental solutions. Hello, and they, they've resisted because I've personally offered that's not okay. Um, but that's why Green TV is launching, thanks to you, because we are going to hopefully be here to answer all your questions and building, transportation, plastics, food, fuel, fashion, energy, you name it. There's so much to talk about. We will not run out of problems. We will not run out of solutions. And that's just a bit of background and I guess a plug, but that's because we're filling a need. It's a green gap in media and it's gone on too long and they just aren't going to catch up quickly enough, even if they did allow a one hour, once a week show, that'll just skim the surface. So with that in mind, um, just thank you so much for making this connection. I can't, I'm only one person. Hopefully Green TV will allow me to reach more people with all my wonderful guests like you, but it's up to all of us, right? To have put, I say, right. put on the green glasses and look to see where you can conserve, whether it's your, your home, your office place, your church, your synagogue. We all need to speak up. You can't, environmentalists can't do it alone, clearly. Um, and the media, mainstream media has failed in terms of programming on solutions. So it's in our hands and hopefully that will change soon. With Green TV, uh, we have big plans to really reach millions of people who are concerned, love their children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, pets, parks, communities, whatever it is you love, it's all threatened. And that's not hyperbole. And that's not, unfortunately, overstating it. it it's strangely, scarily enough where we find ourselves at. Danielle, so much 
Thank you so much for being with us. I'm so appreciative um, that you joined us in this uh, early launch stage of Green TV, made it possible, and we definitely want to have you back. Sounds great. Yeah, it'd be a pleasure to come back. And thank you so much for having me today and for raising awareness about such an important topic. I'm really excited to see you kind of leading Green TV.